I'm like, yeah. Yeah, Shalom Rastafari. Um, we're going to get into this. We're continuing with the God particle, right? The black dot. Um, melanin, ET, Ethiopian, this untranslatable part, Alpha, Omega, Aleph, Tav. All right, now let's um, continue. This will be like the third part right here. And we're going to continue right over here. Now, we already had noted that this is found in, in, in Genesis. That Once again, this is the untranslatable part, right, in the, in the Hebrew Bible or in the traditional Bible, what Christ called the tradition of the Jews, right, the tradition of his day. That which was oral became written down and became possessed by another people, right, the what Revelation, who Revelation says are the Jews who call themselves Jews and are not in Revelation chapter 2 and 9 and 3 and 9. And we see like we're moving between 2 and 9 to 3 and 9 where many are beginning to recognize that truth and are beginning to submit and are beginning to bow down and recognize that the true and living God is in I and I, his, his, his corporate his corporate Yeshua, in other words, the true Beta Israel is the corporate Yeshua. Remember that the Israelites were called his son. And we had mentioned this particular artwork right here and had touched on this artwork right here. So let's bring this up. This is a rare um this is a rare artwork right here that really depicts the Exodus or the Passover or the crossing over. Of the old um, of the Old Testament, it tells that there's no evidence of it, but we see right here, this is a broken piece of a of a wall monument, and we heard like even in many writings, even Gerald Macy speaking about the Afro um, um, Shemitic and the Ethiopian and the inner African roots of the Bible and the mysteries of the Bible, he was pointing out. And this wall painting and that wall painting. So now what they do, they say, well, can you give us any primary source? Can you give us any evidence? Where is this from? Can you show us a scripture or a verse? Well, we're showing you right here artwork that clearly depicts, right, the, the Hebrews, right, being led out, the Beta Israel being led out. And, and here we have the Exodus scene with the, um, remember that, that video, Exodus Decoded? They didn't use this. Mm -hmm. In that Exodus Decoded, they used one of the Beni Hassan, right, the Beni Hassan wall paintings, and said, well, this is the Habiru, or the Hebrews, or the Ami, you know what I'm saying, or Amo, to say his people, right? Well, this is his people. This is I and I ancestors, lost sheeple of the, of the Beit Israel, so-called black people, Afro-American, Negroes, colors, Latinos. This is us, right? This is us right here. This is our ancestors. And you can see the racial similarity right there. So we, we, we pointed that out in the first part, giving, giving a groundation to the revelation, the redemption. But the key is that, that, that Israel, that we as the lost sheep who are under the 58 or so curses that identify us in the Old Testament, particularly in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 to 68, each and every one of them you see occurring to the true Beta Israel. So that's 58 proofs, right, that we as so-called black people or Ethiopian Hebrews are the true Beta Israel of scripture, of the Bible, and the world has been horribly um, deceived. And many so-called Christians out there have also been deceived. But some of them seem to be willingly deceived, but many of our lost sheep are believing that, uh, that, uh, that, that, that the Jews, as they call them, who are actually... Um, who are actually Ashkenazi converts or Edom Khazars? We say there's a Jebu, there's a Jeb, there's a Jib, there's a Jebusite connection to them as well. Uh huh. And Jebus was one of the tribes of Canaan. But now, if you go on the YouTube, 
they have they paid off some scared black folks, some Ethiopians, some East Africans to claim, right, that they are Canaanites. But if you look at them, right, the so-called ones who are being, being told, like we're saying we're niggas, we're African-American, two continents. When you ask them, a black person, what's your nationality? Or, or they may say Jamaican or Haitian. These are not our true nationality. That's part of the curse is the ignorance, both of who we are and who is the true Moshiach, right, the true Messiah. Now, we was touching on the S, right, the Alpha, right, or the Alpha Omega. You know, in the Bible says, I am the Alpha Omega, Revelation 1 and 8. But that's Greek, right? That would be all Greek to Yeshua. He would have said, Aleph, Tau. And we showed you already, we demonstrated from the, um, from the, the, the Hebrew New Testament right here. You can see this right here, right? Ani ha alef we ani ha tal, right? You can see that right there, right? And this is um, this is uh, Revelation. You can see that, all right? So you can see how it's side by side right there, all right? So he says that I am the alef and the tal, which is the beginning and the ending of the Hebrew, right, of the Hebrew um, Aleph Beit, called uh, Alphabet, because that was taken over into the Greek, right, and they changed it around and everything. And that's where we get these translations now, the later translations, the Septuagint, the Greek translations, which says Alpha and Omega, all right? But Yeshua spoke Hebrew, some say Aramaic, Right, we say a more Afro-Semitic root part, but you know, let's just say whether well, the dialects. We can debate the dialects, but we know that it, he said Aleph Tau. He was proud to be a a true Jew or a Ayud or a Yehudi or a Judahite. All right, he came to save his people. All right, now with that being said. Let's just go to some of the some of the um, some of the evidence here. As we've been speaking about et, there's a very interesting particle found in Hebrew that they tell us down here is not translated, right? It's not translated, right? And so if you look at this right here, let's go a little further so you can see it appears occurs 22 times in 18 verses. So 22, any Hebrew will know who knows the basic um, Aleph bait that Hebrew has 22. If you look at the acronistic Psalms, like Psalm 119, even in the Good King James Bible, you'll see that I think each eight or so verses have begin with a, 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 a sequential Hebrew alphabet, right? So one would be Aleph, and then about eight or so verses, then bait, then Gimel, then Dalet, then so forth and so on. Was that Tarefa, you know, until we get to Tau, which will be the end. So he says, I am the E T. Yeshua HaMoshiach says, I am the Aleph Tau. I am the beginning and the end of the Hebrew alphabet, right? That's what it is on the surface of it. But there's a deeper reality to it, right? Now, in 18 verses, right, in the Hebrew concordance of the King James Version of the Bible, we went to the first one where we find it in Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. But wait, right here they say it's not translated. So if we read this again, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. But wait, um, in the beginning, God created at Alpha Tau, the heaven, and at Alpha Tau, the earth, right? But what does Alpha Tau mean? I am the beginning and the end. I am the Aleph and I am the Tau. Now, we have to break this down by really overstanding. Look right here. Here it goes right here. Aleph, if you study 
the symbology, right? Because these are the symbolizes. There's, there's a there's a deep spiritual um, understanding that the ale symbolizes the ox or the bull, the the sacrifice bull, right? And tau. This is not. This is the Babylonian. Remember, this is the square Babylonian. If you look at this in the paleo, it would be like a circle with an X, like a cross, right? Like the Ethiopic has it as a cross, right? It looks just like a cross. But this is the latter Babylonian, right? This is the Babylonian. Remember, the Israelites went to Babylon, and during the time of Ezra, they, they, they squared it. They started to write the Hebrew in the same fontography as the Babylonians wrote their square letters. So this is why you have a different, this is the Masoretic. Masora means tradition. So remember, Christ was, Yeshua was rebuking them for their tradition. But he said their tradition made void, because you can't see the cross in here, right? But that's what that means when we look at the original, the oldest form, the Afro-Shemitic and the Ethiopic form of the letter. So we have a sacrificial ox or bull, and then we have the cross. This is a perfect understanding of what we have here in Yeshua HaMoshiach, right? We have that perfect sacrifice or God's sacrifice for the sin of his people upon the cross, right? Upon the cross. So we see this right here from top to bottom, right? Now, it's interesting when we look at the cross and we look at the tabernacle, right, the cross and the tabernacle. And what we're speaking here is that the Almighty uses word pictures, right? He uses word pictures, like when he says the valley of the, of the dry bones, right, and, and his kia, right, and you have skull and bones, and at the foot of the cross, right, where was the cross? It was Golgotha, and Golgotha means the place of the skull. Mm -hmm. Notice that Golgotha does not translate the place of the skulls. That Golgotha, where Christ, where Yeshua, where the Moshiach was crucified, it translates as the place of the skull. Now we have skull and bones. Now we have so-called the Freemason, Illuminati, the Satanists, the Luciferians. All right? And they say they will not be under black male. Right? They would not be under black male. They take this as extortion. Right? They take the sacrifice of the true Moshia as extortion. All right? So, therefore, they cannot receive this. Now, what's interesting about this right here is that when we look at the Aleph and the Tau, we see the sacrifice of Yeshua HaMoshia. Praise Yah. We see the Aleph, the sacrificial, the sacrificial ox. Right, and, and now even the ox has a deeper significance when we recognize from Enoch, right, the patriarchs, the Adam and, 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 and Eve. Eve is likened to a cow and Adam to like a, like a bull, right, the symbology. They did not worship these things at that time. They understood the symbology. Just like we might say things like, oh, so-and-so is like a bird. We're not, we're not worshiping them as a bird, but we're saying they are swift or they fly high or like a cat. You know what I'm saying? We use that like that. Now, the idiotes and those who are under demonic, you know, demonic superimposition, they begin to worship these symbols, but the symbols they teach us, right? The parables they teach us if we would receive it as Hebrews um, 10 and 20 says in a new and a living way. Now, this is what charges the God particle. Mm -hmm. This is what makes the melanin that we have. See, the mel you see, we have melanin, and there's a blessing in melanin, but in the state of a curse, the melanin is a curse to us. So a lot of the black um, Afro-centrics, um, they are right in the basic technology and the basic architecture. But what they're missing is the real significance of Yeshua HaMoshiach. But moreover, what they're missing is their true identity as Beta Israel. That's what a lot of our black folks who are into the consciousness, the knowledge, and all of that, what they're missing. A lot of them have gone and returned into Egypt, which might be a teaching ground for many. 
But let's understand that Moses did not steal the Ten Commandments because we know that there are 613 commandments. So if you say ten, we will ask you about what about the other 603? Where was that from? See, so you have to understand certain things that are said. You understand, and put it into its proper context, all right? So when we deal with the et right here, right, we deal with the et right here. Let's bring this up right here. Let's deal a little more with the et. Now, here's what we showed you from the very beginning. So now we just touched on some of the basic um, information there, and we have et abbreviated like this, right? And this is the, it's not translated, Right by your uh, present Bible translators, and we know who they are. They're the ones who call themselves and who are not. Mm -hmm. But the scripture says they do lie. Scripturally, a liar is a devil, or uh, right? Diablos is say a liar, right? Casey, right? Um, um, a liar. They, they they are lying, right? And many Jews are coming out and even pointing it out in some excellent research and. We'll try to get to all that together. It's out there on the YouTubes, and, it's, and it's, it's out there. So when you get it, you have to store it, back it up. If you can disseminate it, you should disseminate it to those who are willing to learn the half of the story that hasn't been told. Now, Tav, they call it Tav. The Ashkenazi pronounce that Tav. Now, Tav, Aleph, Tav. The Greek says Alpha and Omega. But the Hebrew of Yeshua would say the Aleph and the Tau, right? The, the A and the T. And the A and the T is a particle in Hebrew which is untranslated. It says it's not translated. And it first appears, notice, it first appears when we, pull up, when we pull up the scripture. Let's see if we can pull up the scripture right here. It first appears, right? It first appears in Genesis, Right? Let's move this down. It first appears in Genesis 1 and 4, I mean 1 and 1 first, and then 1 and 4 where it says, And Elohim Baruch Hu, he saw, right, he saw, remember he, he saw, right, Roi, right, he saw, right, he had the vision, he saw the light, right, he, remember this is before the sun and the moon was, created as people believe, or the sun and the moon appeared as it would appear days later. That here, right, here in this very first day or day period, because the day of the Lord is as a thousand years, so, you know what I mean, let's understand that, that he saw the light. And now you notice the 853, this red right here, the red right here means it's the same et. Remember, it's untranslated, it's not translated. Mm -hmm. They say they don't know what it means because it only appears in 22, right, in 22 places and in 18 verses, 22 times and 18 verses. And 22 is the exact number of the beginning, the Aleph, the beginning of the Hebrew alphabet and the Tau, right, the Tau, which is the completion. But if we interpret like we have a, a book out, um, that is uh, Hebrew hieroglyphics, and we don't have that on hand right here, but you need to get a copy of um, Hebrew hieroglyphics, all right? Go to www.lojsociety.org, all right? Support the root, uh, check on the books page, and, 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 and get that particular book if you want to know more about the symbolic logic to the Hebrew, right? The Hebrew is like a cookie cutter. It's like a code. Right, so we have to be able to study to show ourselves approved to Ha Elohim as workmen and workwomen that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So they were not able to rightly divide the et because they didn't translate it. Right, they say they, they don't know what it means. They say it might be a particle, you know what I'm saying, but they're not really too sure. There's a lot of speculation on it. But in Revelation, we have Alpha Omega. And the Alpha Omega gives us the important key and the hint into the logos, what, what, what is called the logos or the word that became what? Flesh. Remember, the word became flesh, and it did what? It dwelt amongst us, right? It dwelt amongst us. The word became flesh. And here we have 
Yeshua, right? We have Yeshua, right, um, showing himself to his disciples. They thought he was a spirit, right? They thought he was a spirit. I almost to say a ghost, but they thought he was a spirit. And he said that a spirit does not have flesh and bones. But he didn't mention blood. It's like in the beginning, Adam and Eve. They had flesh and bones, but it doesn't mention blood, right? But his blood was shed for our, for Beta Israel salvation. Firstly and foremost, even Hawaria Saul or Shaul, Hawaria Paulos, even he testifies to that. You understand? Know even he, he says it's first to the Jew or the black Hebrew, right? And it's then to the Greek or the Gentile. So there's a sharp contrast between the races, the, the Judahite, right, or the Ethiopian Hebrew type, right? And we have a Roman historian Cornelius uh, Tacitus that says that the Jews of 70 A.D. were of the race of the Ethiopian. Now that brings us to a very important next connection right here that we have to understand. So we know that Yeshua is the Word, right? He's the Word made flesh. All right. Now we talk about this this melanin. Don't we, you hear a lot of folks talk about the melanin? And we got melanin, and we got melanin. So how come we're not able to activate the melanin? You understand both individually and collectively in the blessing, but we still find ourselves partially, but the overall, some of the people have risen above that, you know what I'm saying, in grace, right, now working out their salvation, so that melanin in them, see, Yeshua is our shalom, Yeshua is our peace, he is our righteousness, because he is the only righteousness approved by Abba, right, by the Father. You know what I'm saying? So he is the savior of our souls, yet he is also the savior of our DNA. You know what I'm saying? Because remember that uh, it's for the glorification. Remember, it's all about that glory, right? The glorification. The Bible speaks about the glorified body. So he demonstrated, right? He demonstrated his glorified body. Now notice what it says in the Bible, and his hands are outstretched. His hands are outstretched still, right? Remember what, what Yeshua said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the son of man, right, the, the Bain Ha-Adam, he must be lifted up, right? That means Yeshua is important. You're saying Yehoshua is important. The Moshiach is important. But it, it is in that new and living way, right, in that new and living way. You understand? Know in spirit and in truth. So we have learned the truth of his racial identity, but we need to grasp the spiritual reality. All right? We need to grasp the spiritual reality. That is where the last enemy, known as death, shall be destroyed. You understand? Know and this is part of the enmity because of that melanin. But see, a lot of one's melanin have been made deactive de by the genetically modified food by all these experiments, you understand? Some even say the AIDS virus and other things, but also through, the, through what you take in in your spirituality, what you are main. That means what you accept as true, what you have faith in. You understand? If you believe in Caesar, right? If you believe in Caesar's system, the world system, if you don't know that you are Beta Israel, you are still under the curse. Right? You're still under that. Why? Because no lie is of the truth. You know, so any of these guys that try to run around and say that, well, black people are not the, not, are not the Israelites or the Hebrews and the Americans and the Caribbean and that this curse is not upon us because of disobedience is lying to you. You understand? Because we have, even in the curses, 58 different curses. Right? 58 proofs. Right? And there's other brothers and sisters who have gone through each and every one and provided ample ev evidence. We have um, from Babylon to Timbuktu, which is one very good book, as well as Valley of the Dry Bones. All right? And you need to check those out for yourself. So Yeshua HaMoshiach, he overcame, right? He overcame death. See, this is what's important. He overcame death by the power of his life. 
So it's how we live it. You know what I'm saying? Are we, are we uh, remembering the Shabbat, the Sendet, to keep it set apart? Are we studying? Are we growing? You know what I'm saying? Are we learning of Yeshua? Are we learning his way? Are we following him? Are we picking up our cross? Do we even understand on the spiritual level, on the true Christ, Kabbalah, the true black Christ, Kabbalah, what the cross really even signifies? Yovas, I mean, just look in our history of the lynching. You see, the lynchings is, is, is that only good black man is a dead black man. You, you, you have to understand the deepness about that, being hung on a tree, according to Torah, is a curse, right? So, so for our, for, for, for our um, suffering is their blessing, you know what I'm saying? Because we keep, keep denying the suffering of Yeshua, how he carried our sorrows, how he bore these infirmities, all right? So there's a psychological healing. You know what I'm saying? That when the true Wengel, the true good news, the true gospel is preached, there's a psychological healing as well as a physical healing. I mean, look at the health situation of black folks, even black folks up in the church. Mm -hmm. They may not so-called drink. They might avoid marijuana or at least only smoke it in recreational ways. You see, all these things connect. You know what I'm saying? Because if there's a blessing of God to be taken in a blessing way and in ignorance, we don't know that, then ignorance of the law is no excuse. That's why they tell you that in, in the world, in the seclora. You know what I'm saying? But instead, one serves the, the gods of the world, the wood and the stone, the money, right? Or, or, or the false god, or look at the cross and don't understand what the cross means because they don't, they don't understand the, who they are. They don't understand what hanging on a tree is. They don't understand what lynching is or woolly lynch. Look at that, lynching and woolly lynch. I mean, just go figure. 1619, right, to 2019, but they have you looking at 2012. 2012 is only the beginning of sorrow or the, the beginning of the end. Really, it's only the end of the beginning, my brothers and sisters. You see, we're coming into a certain time, and there's certain things that we're going to see happen in the earth. You know what I'm saying? So we have to be spiritually prepared. You know what I'm saying? This is why there's a heightened effort, you know what I'm saying, of, of, of Beta Israel to get out this message and this good news. All right? So with that being said, let us connect this right here. So we touched on the fact that Yeshua, and he says, Aleph Tau. We touched on the fact that there's two places, right, in Genesis 1. One is the creative process. Remember, he's a, he is the Word, and all things were created through him, right? He is the Word. So there's the spirituality, but there's the truth. So when people say it doesn't matter what race or what color, uh, you know, Christ is, they're lying to you. Either, either they are knowingly lying or they're just repeating the lie that they have heard or out of fear, you know, for saying of flesh, of, of sinful man they are avoiding telling the truth to themselves and to others. But when we look at this et, right, we see the et in the creation process, and we see the et when he saw. But it's not translated. Ethiopia, E-T-H. If you look it up, E-T-H is often abbreviated like that, right, as well as you take off the H, because Ashkenazi is put on the H, S. So, it's, you know, Sabas, right, and then some of them say it as S, Sabas. Sabas, because that list, because they're different people. They, you know, from a different root. They're converted, yes, you understand. Um, but that's a whole question mark as well, too. But what's not a question mark is this link between S, not translated, and S, the abbreviation of Ethiopia. That's why they keep trying to tell you that, that Ethiopia comes from Greek. Even though Ethiopians... Right? And ancient Egyptians taught the Greeks, especially the European Greeks, the Hellenistic Greeks, the Maccabean time, Maccabees, links all of that right there. It's like the boule today or the same kind of thing. They go after the Greek but not to the root, you know what I'm saying, not to the Hebrew root. So they try, to, they try to throw you off with that, right, say that Ethiopia actually comes from the Greek. Let's see if that's true, right? Let's see if that's true for ourselves. Does it come from the Greek? 
Now let's look at, so we already showed you right here that the, that the, that the two places in Genesis 1 is, is in the beginning, right? And then compare that with John 1 and 1. In the beginning was, the, you know, the, the Word was with God, you know, in the beginning um, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then as it goes further, it's talking about he was a light. Then in verse 4 it says, And Ha Elohim, the sustainer, saw the light. The sustainer, Egeziari Herotusabhat, the sustainer, the father of the light of the firstborn chosen nation. Remember, he created the Beta Israel for a purpose. And, and our ancestors coming down to us has failed that purpose. So when we look at why our situation is what it is, just go figure. You understand? Know um, check the facts and do the math. Here it says that he saw the light. So when he saw the light, when he read the, the, the light, when he saw the light, right, that it was good. Now, the interesting thing about good, the word good is tob in Hebrew, tob. The archaic name of Ethiopia is tobia, tobia. You can go and look it up. It's the Hebrew um, 2896. And God, Ha Elohim, divided the light from the darkness. Now, notice those two verses there in Genesis, right? And Yeshua says in Revelation 1 and 8, he says that, he says that I am the Aleph and I am the Tau, right? I am the Aleph, I am the Tau. Now, we see it being associated, right? Let's bring this up when we look at, when we look at um, the Gospel according to St. John chapter 1. In the beginning... In the Bereshit, or the Berasit, was the Word, and the Word was with God, Ha Elohim, and the Word was Ha Elohim. The same, the same, the same today, yesterday, forever, the same was in the beginning with Ha Elohim. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, right, was life. That's why he was able to swallow up death with the power of his life, of his liberty, right? And the life was the light or the illumination of men, of humanity, of Adam, of the children of Adam. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. The ignorance. See, they'll make you think that it's about blackness there. It's not saying black to darkness because of the ignorance, right? The ignorance. Now, it goes on to say that there's a man sent, and that's speaking about Johannes. Then it speaks about Yeshua HaMoshiach being the true light. Now, it's interesting that light, that, that when the Almighty spoke, right, there was light, right? And the light, when you understand how light actually becomes matter, and matter has light in it. Now, when we make this connection with the God particle, let us not forget that et, right, et, right, is they say in speech, it is a particle, and it refers to entity. It refers to entity, and we saw that in the Strong's Concordance. It refers to entity. That's interesting, an entity, right, an entity, a certain being, right, a certain beingness. That was the true light, right, the true Burhan which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. So it's the same light that's in every man, right, every atom, right, that comes into the world, every atom, right, every atom, every atom that comes into the world. He was in the world, right, and it was it, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Now, if you say it the way they say it, you will understand why they're searching for the God particle. It was in the world, right? And the world was made by it, and the world knew it not. And that's the reason why they call it the God particle. And I submit to you that the God particle is connected with the superluminal melanin. In other words, the melanin that is part of the glorified body that Yeshua HaMoshiach, he demonstrated. Right? That's why death is the last enemy to be destroyed. I mean, what else is stopping folks from doing a lot of the things that they already know is right? If you think about it, is that fear of death. And it says in the scripture, the fear of death put them into a slavery. 
right? It put them into slavery. But we see right here where Yeshua HaMoshi, he overcame skull and bones. Now, some would say, what about that 322? Well, uh, if you ask, I'm glad you asked. Let's just look at 322 for a moment of Genesis. Genesis chapter 3, right, verse 22. What does it say right here? It says, it's the judgment of the expulsion. It ends the first dispensation, right? And Yahweh Elohim said, Behold, look and see, the man has become as one of us, to know good and evil, and now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Now, some would say, but that was a bad God. That was a bad thing to do. Don't you understand that if man took of the tree of life in a state of sin, he would have had to live forever in sin. He would have had to live forever in condemnation. He would have had to live forever in judgment. So that expulsion from the proximity of the tree of life was grace. Now we know that in the New Testament, in the Hadith Kidan, in the Burt Hadasha, we know that it's through Yeshua HaMoshiach, according to Revelation, that we have access, mm -hmm, that we again have access to the tree of life. Right? We once again have access to the true Christ, black Christ, Kabbalah, to receive the Kabbalah, to receive of the tree of life. That's why in the, in the new Seder, right, it is the memorial of Christ's sacrifice. And that thanks to his father, you understand, know for that salvation, for the ending of the curses. The ending of the curses and the restoration of that divinity. Not that individual divinity, you playing like you a God. No, but as a son or a daughter of God, upon the sons and the daughters, as is in the book of Joel. So what we're looking forward to prophetically is what's written in the book of Joel. Now, Joel, they say, is connected with this time of Aquarius. Well, Aquarius is a time of the, war, of the pouring out. But it's two different kind of pouring out. On the true Beta Israel, the faithful in Moshiach, it's a pouring out of his spirit. Now, upon the enemies, right, um, and the lost, it's a pouring out of judgment, what they call in the Bible the great tribulation. Let us understand that. All right? Now, the Ethiopian connection, Mindana, where does it come in? Well, we just touched on the abbreviation, and then we looked at Acts 8 and 27, where it says, And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, a queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure. So he was a treasurer, right? And he had great authority. He was a prince of the realm. And had come to Jerusalem for to worship. This is the key that proves that he was an Ethiopian Hebrew. But even at that time, the, the Hebrews were scattered. There was a small, not small, but there was, there was people in Judea, and people in the land. But there was a mixed multitude. Remember, the Samaritans are kind of linked to the modern-day um, Jews in comparison to the Judahites, the true ethnic, who kept the, more of the true purity of the faith. Their failure was to um, reject the Moshiach and to go after the politics, right, to choose uh, Caesar and the Herodians. It's similar to what's happening in this abomination right now if you would receive the truth. Now, if you look down here, which is a very interesting study, it says uh, Kai and Nistami, right? Porio, Kai, I do, right? I do, I do, oh, I do, oh, right? Anir, Atheops. Now, you see this right here? Atheops. Atheops, right? Atheops. Then it has Unikos, Unikos, and so forth. This is also interesting too. Um, by by Silissa, it's like the um, 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 what do you call it? The Vatican, um, the Basilios or Basilia, the Basilica, whatever, right? But it's Queen. You see that Queen? Queen is Queen is uh, right over there. You see Queen, right? Remember here she sits a Queen. 
That's Mystery Babylon, right? That's the Pope of all the, the false religions, right? In this end time, in, in the fulfillment of the times of the Gentiles. But now look at that atheos. So we clicked on it. So you go right here, right? You go right here, right? And you see this right here? We're going to click on atheops, right? And let, let it bring us to the next page in atheops. So you can see how the et connects with the Ethiopians or the et yopiawian, right? The, remember the good part, oh, that he saw, and it's connected with that et, right? That et and oh. And then also Yah is also connected, right? Yah, right? And there's a name, uh, Tobijah or Tobia. Remember in Kunta Kinte? My, my name is Kunta Kinte. It says, um, Toby, your name is Toby. Now, To is a good name. In fact, To itself means, right? It means um, good name. Okay, this is, this is taking a moment to, um, to open. Let's see if the connection coming through. But it was interesting because they always tell us that this is Greek, right? And if you notice, they always are trying to change the name of Ethiopia to Abyssinia, right? Did they ever tell you why? They never tell you why. Now, notice right here, you have the pronunciation. It's the I, right, for long vowel sound, T-H-E, then O-P-S, A-C, I see, I see, I see, right? I see or E see, I see, oops. I see, oops. He says a masculine noun. And it says from I saw to scorch. But if you notice something, there's no link right here. Then they say oops, right? Oops, oops, right? Oops is the face. Now, isn't this interesting when it's about the face of God, the panim and paniel and peniel? You know, like the so-called pineal gland. Now, this is where we might attempt to, you know, bring a little closer to the, to the root of this in some of the images that we save concerning the God particle. Let's look at the brain for a moment, all right? Let's look at the brain. Remember, Christ is the head, and we are the body. We are the corporate body or that corporate man, which is, which is to say Israel, the true Israel. Because we already have that deposit. You know what I'm saying? But it's not activated. So a lot of people feeling proud because they got melanin, but the melanin is not, um, is not activated because it can only be activated in God because otherwise under the curse. And it's shut off, right? Now, if you go to the first couple of vids that we uploaded on the Rastafari uh, Sabbatico channel on the YouTubes, we touched on, um, I think it was a Charlie Road show where they was talking about the brain. And um, we found it interesting, right, as we started to think about the brain and make these connections here. Let's um, enlarge this a little bit more, right, so you can understand. Remember in the Bible there's um, something called uh, Pineo, right? Okay, now this is from some site that says uh, the location of occult power. Now, occult just means secret, right, secret, in the secret place of the Most High, right, in the secret place of the Most High. Remember how Hawaii Apollos, Shaul, is always speaking about, um, you know, um, um, serving the Lord with his, with his mind and the mind and the transformation of the mind and this connection with the mind because, see, my people perish because of a lack of knowledge, you know what I'm saying? Some things cannot be activated in us unless we admit, say, our woe and our main, unless we admit it with all, of our, with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our might, which is the next part of the Shema. So it's the location of secret power, right? And it has gyrus right up here, the frontal lobe, right? The frontal lobe where they try to project images and things and, 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 and kind of mind mind games, mind altering things. The pituitary is right here. The hypocamus, um, and it was breaking down all the different parts of the brain. But look right here. This is the pineal, right? The pineal. And you can go and find pineal with, with P-E, right? And if you, and if you look, P-E-N-I-E-L. Here they have it, P-I-N-E-A-L. 
But where does it point to? It points to this right here. It points to this, this uh, sifra, right? This, uh, this measured space right here. That's the pineal gland, remember? And with, 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 with Yaakov, Jacob, this is what Jacob was called Israel, right? Israel, one who wrestles or one who is strong, rather, or some say one who ascends or one who is in the labor, if we look at it from an from a Ethiopic, right? Or even on another level, the, Ash, the, the Asha, right? The Asha, remember Asha, you know, Ahia, Asha, Ha'ish. So when we just break it down to the simple, basic Hebrew, right, and we start to understand it, right, with a newborn, in a newborn way, right, in the, in, in, in the, in the new covenant, you know what I'm saying, in and through Yeshua, this is what we're speaking about right here, right, the pineal gland, right, the pineal gland. There's so many studies on melanin. That's why they're sin synthesizing it. That's why they're doing things to um, paralyze the melanin in you and to take you off course and to get you distracted on other things than this truth. You understand? And learning this truth for yourself. Because if you don't learn it for yourself, then these things cannot be active in you. You understand? Even though you have that melanin. So the melanin connection with the pineal or the pineal is very, very important. But remember, the Moshia, Yeshua, he is the key. Right? He is the key because when we get past the veil, which is his flesh, you understand, we're getting to the root of our true spirituality, right? To the true spirituality, to walking his way, which is the way of shalom, right? The way of peace, the way of erefu, the way of rest and health, of being still, right? And knowing him. That's why it says that in the millennial time that no one will have to tell you of here's God or there's God, but everyone will know this. You know what I'm Will know this truth, right? Will know this truth for themselves. Now, um, one kind of connection here, too, is when we look at so-called um, Kabbalah. And, and I want to bring up this picture right here in showing the activation, right? The activation of that. And notice that the heart chakra, read um, Romans uh, chapter 10 and 10 along with this particular um, word art right here, Romans chapter 10 and 10, right? You can see this right here. And now this, right, this is connected. Let's see if we can uh, make this a little bit larger, right? This is connected, right, no doubt, with this. Do you understand? These two are connected. You understand? And beholding Yeshua and beholding the finished work. He said, Tefetzimah. It is complete. It is finished. Now, one will say, well, if it was finished so long ago, how come we still had to go through all that? Because they did not receive it. The people did not receive it. The people were divided the same way people are today, even though the evidence is, is clear. The evidence is there. But when you now read um, Romans 10 and 10, is further activation among his people. Remember, to the Jew, the Judahite, the black Jew first, right? And then to the Gentile, the righteous among the Gentile that receive it in spirit and in truth. And they receive it in spirit and it is in truth. They know that he is Ethiopian, he is black, that what his racial type is. And they have no problem with that. You know what I'm Because it's the truth. You know what I'm saying? They're keeping their eye on the true prize and, and that word of God. It says right here, um, let's go to nine, um, um, 10 and 9. Well, actually, let's go to 10 and, 10 and 8. The whole chapter is really very important, but it says, But what saith it? Right? The word is nigh thee. The word is near thee. Even in thy mouth. Right? Even in thy mouth. You know, where he says that um, the life and death is in the power of the tongue, right? Or the hand of the tongue, if you study in the, the Mishle, in the Ibrahist, or even in the Amharic, right? It says, you see, the word is nigh, is near thee. The word, remember the word in the beginning was the word? Even in thy mouth and in thy heart. 
So the word that's in our mouth must also be in our heart, in our conscience, right, in our consciousness, right, in the innermost of our inner, in inner sense, right? That is the word of faith. Right? The word of imnet, the word of our hymenot, the word of our admission on he who is the Amen. Yeshua HaMoshiach, he is the real Amen that the Egyptians at the latter period were groping for, but they got deceived. Moses got it right. All right? Moses got it right because death reigned from Adam to Moses. Understand that. Death reigned from Adam to Moses. Okay, it says right here, he says that, that that is the word of faith which we preach, which we proclaim. What do we proclaim? Do we proclaim the fears of the world or do we proclaim the faith of Yeshua, HaMoshiach? All right? It says that if thou, if you, right, if you male, if you brother shall confess with thy mouth, right, the Lord or Adonai, Yeshua, Adoni Yeshua, Adonai Yeshua, right, and shall believe, or ma men, right, shall have a muna, um, um, trust and confidence and, 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 and be a witness to with faith. You know, like people bear witness to all these other things that they don't know, but they have faith in it and they bring that, they magnetize that in their reality. Will you admit in your heart? That God, Ha Elohim, right, the same one, right, that et Ha Shamayim, where et Ha Eret, or Eret, right, Ha Elohim Baruchu, blessed be he, hath raised him from the dead, hath raised him above the so called skull and bones, right, has raised him from the dead and given him access to the tree of life, right? Thou shall be saved, right? Thou shall be shalom as he is shalom, right? For with thine, or with the heart, this is the principle here, with the heart man admits, right? With the heart man admits, or, or it says believe. That's the, that's the kindergarten Judahite version. Right, but now we learn that believe come from Amen and Muna, and that links with Amen that we have in Revelation chapter three, verse fourteen, to righteousness. Who is our righteousness? Yeshua HaMoshiach. He is our righteousness. He's the righteousness of the true and living God, and that's why we must repent, brothers and sisters. And with the mouth, confession is made to salvation. So as we speak the truth, right, as we live in this truth, right, we grow in this truth towards that fullness of the full activation of the God particle, all right? And that begins in our heart. That begins with the amen. That begins with our admittance, right, with the metanoia, with that repentance, having a change of, having a change of mind, a change of a change of heart. For the scripture saith, whosoever mameneth or has a muna or, or admits amen truthfully and faithfully in spirit and in truth on him shall not be ashamed. Right? And this is what we have to understand. There's no difference between the Jew or the black and the Greek or the white. For the same Adonai over all is rich to all that call Right? All that call on him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of Adonai, the name of Yeshua, right, shall be saved. Shall be saved. So, I mean, there's more to this right here. I mean, it's so important. So then faith cometh by hearing. Right? This is what you're doing now. You're hearing. The next level you have to go is now study it. Go to Romans chapter 10 and read this and, 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 and study it, right, and commit it to your memory and meditate on it, right, and pray for the Holy Spirit and for wisdom to enlighten you and illuminate you with the true light of Yeshua HaMoshiach. So then faith cometh by hearing, by the Shema, 
Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Achad, and hearing in the Shema by the word of God. Now, if I'm correct, I think it actually says the word of Christ. I think I've read this before, and this is one of those areas of the scriptures, right, where King James wasn't quite as accurate. I mean, it's a good kindergarten level. It's a good first step, especially for those of us who are English speakers. It's a stepping stone. Don't let it be a stumbling block. It's become a stumbling block for many ones and ones, right? Don't let it be a stumbling block for you. Now, in Romans uh, 10, and, uh, 10 and 16, let's just hear this by Marinya, right, or in... Um, in All right, let's just hear this right here. Okay, it says the Exiadi here. Oh no, this is not the this is not the place. But there's another place where it says by the word. Really, it says the word of of Christ. It says in Gadias um, Imnet Kamesmatno Mesmatim the Exiadi here. Oh no. Well, we know that 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 the Kal is the word, right? The the Kol or the Kal, right? Is that word. And the word is that word that became flesh and took up our sinful flesh. Because our sinful flesh was that black flesh that had already lost its, 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 its God power because of trespass, because of violation of the covenant. And this is what brought on the curses. You know, and this is what brought on the curses, the 58 or so curses that we have even beginning in Deuteronomy chapter chapter 28 verses 15 to verse 68 now i know we've been on this point and we wanted to actually connect with the ethiopian point but this page here was taking its uh sweet time in um opening up right on the next level so let's see if we can bring this bring this forward right this forward right here i mean this study you can't exhaust the truth you understand? You're going to learn certain things, and you have to eat as much as sufficient for you. But just save this meal. You know what I'm saying? If you have to just stop it for a moment and go and study some things and pray and meditate on this so you can be rightly guided. But here it says, it says, uh, um, Aitho, right? Or Aitho, right? Or Aithe, Aithe, right? Like Aithiopes, Aithiopes, right? It's just a scorch, really. But they don't have no link here. You notice that? No G, no Greek, no whatnot like that. And Opes, then they say the face. So we connect that with the Paniel, which is the face of God. You understand? Well, Ya'iko, before, this is right before he gets the name Israel, right? Then it has right here another link. Should we go there or should we just scroll down here for a moment? Since we're on the page, let's scroll down here for a moment. Let's see what it says. It says Ethiopian black. Now, before they used to say, if you look at old dictionaries, it says Ethiopian Negro. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the Ethiopian folks from Ethiopia, some of them nationalized as Americans, turned their backs on their citizenship, and may they also repent. But um, in the older dictionary, it says Negro. You understand? It says Negro. Now, here it says an Ethiopian. You know what I'm saying? But the connection, they try to remove Negro and say it's offensive. Yet, that's what you'll find in the evidence. Yes, it is offensive. Now, it only appears twice according to the, the, um, the, the Septuagint. And here is a kind of an interesting um, overview, Ethiopes, right? And it says, it says, I thought, now they say not to scorch, but here's to burn, right? Now they're going from scorch to burn, right? Um, scorch and burn, right? And, and here, right, they have oak. Right, the, the ope of one, ope here again, opes, right? It says the face, swarthy. You see that right there? Swarthy, the face being swarthy. So the burn, the face swarthy or a swarthy face, right? A swarthy face, the God face, right? The face of God. This is the generation of them that seek thy face. This is one of our, 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 Sabbath, our Sabbath psalms. Psalm um, 24, and it's very important you understand Psalm 54 and the connection to, um, to the, the redemption, right? It says right here in 24 and, five, uh, 24 and 6, 
This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Yaiko, O Jacob, Selah. Right? Remember Jacob, Peniel, Pineal, the name change to Israel, and the purpose that Yahweh created Israel, right? The high and holy purpose. Now here it says Ethiopian, Hebrew says um, Kushi. Now Kushi is used right now. Today, in the Middle East, by um, racist and other thieves and liars to mean nigger. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a derisive word in the state of Jezreel or Israel. You understand? In the Harab or the, the Harab world. You know, and they're not even the real Ishmaelites, but it's used as a derogatory, like nigger. So it's another byword, right? Remember, that's part of also the curse there, too. Acts. Right, 8 and 27. Here, they said the reference is to Upper Ethiopia. Now, it's interesting because Upper Ethiopia, right, is not the same as Sudan part of Ethiopia. Right, when they say Upper, right, the Upper is more what we know of Ethiopia, the highlands, right, the roof of Africa, the African Sea, called Habesh or Abyssinia, right, a country of Africa adjoining Egypt. Right? This is a country of Africa doing what? Adjoining Egypt. So that whole land. Well, we see a Sudan and Ethiopia and Ghana, I mean, Uganda and Kenya and, uh, and Somalia was all one. You understand? So people get mixed up when they look at the, the times of the Gentiles, right, as part of the deception. And including the island Meroe. Meroe, where the Hindike queens came from, Meroe. Right? Now, this is interesting right here. This is Thyla's, um, or Thayer's lexicon, right? And this is the only reference to it, twice in one verse, right? So let's go to that link right here, all right? Let's go to this. Since they don't want to give us, they, they can't give us any Greek use of that in the Bible, the New Testament. I'm kind of curious, don't you think? But anyway, let's go to the next, right? Let's go to the next um, Link the G thirty seven zero zero, and you're gonna always see the link with what the the Hebrew et, right or E T. Remember E T E T H. Now here we have up ta na up ta no my up like optometrist, right? Like the word for seeing, right? For seeing. What 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 is what is this all about? For seeing. You remember? That et actually appears in two verses, right, in, um, in Genesis. And right here it says, and God, the second one, and God saw et the light. Remember how that links now with, with John's gospel. And to John was given this revelation where he says, I am the Aleph and I am the Tau. So we begin to see how all this is going to link finally together to exactly what John's gospel has said, all right? And this is also right here where we have ETH. It's not translated. Then it's also the ET, right, ET, extraterrestrial, ET, ETH, all right? Then we have, have Opia, right? Then we have Aleph, right, the Hebrew, the Greek uh, um, Alpha, and Tau, the Greek Omega, but we know that Yeshua spoke this. Why did he speak this? Why is this a very important, untranslated part of the Bible, right? And what's the Ethiopian connection? Well, we already see the biblical connection in ETS and the God particle, all right? Now, let's go a little bit deeper in the second part of the word. Since they don't provide us the first part, ATHO, which they say one place means to scorch, the other place means to burn, all right? And they say, well, that's how the Ethiopians got their, the name. And it's Greek, but it's deeper than Greek. Tob is good in Hebrew. Tobia is the archaic name of Ethiopia. All right. Now, they say um, over here it's a verb. So verb means action. It's almost like when you look at Yahweh, the name Yahweh is like a verb. He, um, uh, he who be who he be. Not even is, but he who be. Because the root of it is being. The root of Yahweh's name. And let's remember that Moses got this revelation when he had left Egypt and he went into Ethiopian lands, all right, and he learned this from Jethro, 
who was a high priest. Now, nothing, no indication that he's a Hebrew. He's a Carmite or a Cushi or, or Ethiopian or Medeanite, right? And, and Zipporah is Ethiopian wife. That's why I said y'all, y'all have to get off that Hamite, Shemite stuff on that level that a lot of y'all are following because that's, that's more of the kind of um, um, Ashkenazi invention. If you look up that whole philosophy of Ham, Shem, and Japheth being three different people, they all were what we can call root race people, black peoples with different levels of complexion and, you know, the beauty of, you know, light skin, dark skin, red, red bone, all that, you understand, but they inhabited different places. We know that the leprosy is now revealed to Moses with what happened with the hand, all right? But they said this right here, which is the second part of Ethiops, is a middle voice prolonged from the primary middle voice up to my. Right, Opti- uh, like optima, right, optima, right, subluminal, right, optimi, right, or optom, i, i, he, right, which is used for for it in certain tenses, and both as alternatives of um um apau, right. But what does it mean? It means to look at, to behold, right. And we know from the Hebrew re also means to behold, and that's the same word Ethiopically for the vision, to say revelation, to allow oneself to be seen. Wow. To allow oneself to be seen, to appear, right, to appear. Now, understand there's 58 uses, right, uh, translations. It means everything from see to appear, to look, to show oneself. Being seen, remember how Yeshua, he showed himself, right? He showed himself alive, right? He showed himself. He says um, um, a spirit does not have um, flesh and bone, but notice he did not say blood. Remember Adam, when he said to Eve, he says, this is flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone, but he don't say blood of my blood. Now, some people say, well, we all came from one blood. And in Acts, that's a mistranslation. It means we all came from one, right? We all came from the singularity. Overstand, we all came from one, right? The Ahadu Amlak, right? Now, here it says to look at, to behold, right? To allow oneself to be seen, to appear. Now, when you look at Kush from an Ethiopic, like Kashata Burhan, that name, Kashata Burhan, Kashata, right, which is a, a kind of a feminized form for te, the tau there, but Kashata basically means to appear, right? Was this the first place where people appeared? Now, notice what it says right here, the quotes in the New Testament, Matthew 5 and 8. We're not going to go through all 60 times in 57 verses, but it says, blessed are the pure in heart, what was, oh, aren't we speaking about the heart, right? Doesn't, doesn't Romans speak about that heart, that repentance? For they shall see God. For they shall see God. So this is the same special use of it. Now notice the next time it occurs in Matthew 17 and 3. And behold, look in sight. Here it is. There appeared to them Moses, right, and Elias, or Eliao, they said that this might be who Christ was calling on, Eli, Eli, my God, my God, or Elohai, Elohai, right, or Haile, Haile, when you overstand, right, Moses and Elias talking with him. This is the transfiguration. Now, notice right here in Matthew 24 and 30, it says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and shall see the what? Son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And we see a prophetic fulfillment in Ketamawi, Haila Selassie. Even those heavenly signs occurred, right, one year before the birth of Lich Tafari, or Lich Tafara, and Tafara linked with Tiferet on the Kabbalistic tree of life, which is beauty. And we'll touch on that, too, in its mystic sense, right? Um, Matthew 26 and 64 said, Yeshua said to him, Thou hast said, nevertheless, I say to you hereafter, ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power 
and coming in the clouds of heaven, right? So as you go further and further, right, saying 27 and 4, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood, and they said, what is that to us? This is what Iscariot said. He said, they said, see, they repeat the same word, see thou to that. You understand? It's like the preachers and the pastors. Many of them are going to recognize, and, 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 and hopefully not before it's too late, but it, 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 just might, it just might be. Now, you see how it's connected here, the blood of the just person, see ye to it. You understand? See how this word is used? In its, in its special tenses and senses. But let's get right here to, to the root of the root of the root of it, right? This is how you trace it down to the root. Now, we're already seeing that this alpha tau, that's what's alpha tau, the sacrifice, the sacrificial bull, right? They said in Hebrews, better than the blood of bulls, the blood of bulls and goats, you understand, is the blood of Yeshua HaMoshiach. All right, which is the life. All right, this is a this is a spiritual reality that must be accepted in faith. It says horao, horao, like hurrah, hurrah. Look what it's, look what it means. The verb it means to stare at, right? It says to see with the eyes, right? Firstly, but then look at this: to see with the mind, to perceive, to know. My people know not to see, to become acquainted. With by experience. Isn't that the Gnostic idea, the Awaki idea? Yet they condemned the Gnostics because the Gnostics knew what the Romans were up to. They knew that was the God of this world. That's what they're speaking about. Not the, not the true God of Israel, but the God of this world, the Yadabaot. That's what it's speaking about, and that's who, who Paul Shaul speaks about, the God of this world, which has blinded their what? Their minds to perceive, to know this, to experience, right? 